even before the Enlightenment, the Americas was a place which put heavy importance upon education. For example, in Massachusetts, a 1647 law required public schools for every child. Quakers made church schools, and between 1723 and 1770, about 100 dame schools emerged where widows taught children. The most widely read publications in the America was the Bible and the Almanacs. However, half, half of American women were still illiterate. Slave owners discouraged slaves from becoming literate because they feared if slaves would become literate, they would become educated, they would find about enlightenment ideas, of freedom, of equality, and they would rise up. There came about six American colleges by 1763. Harvard, founded in 1636, William and Mary College in Virginia in 1693, Yale in 1701, the College of New Jersey, now known as Princeton, in 1746, Columbia, previously known as King's College, in 1754, and the Academy and College of Pennsylvania, more commonly known as University of Pennsylvania, in 1755. These colleges started to introduce something known as liberal curricula, which were Enlightenment-style classes. Harvard tried to create an uh, tried to create educated an educated ministry and advance the learning advance the learning of the priesthood. Science also spread around at the time. Solid science was introducing these colleges. New Newtonian physics and astronomy were popular at the time, and they were all taught at these colleges. The largest scientific spread occurred, however, outside of schools. The Royal Society of London was created. Benjamin Franklin was the most celebrated amateur scientist in America for his lightning experiment in 1752. Puritan theologian Cotton Mayfer invented the smallpox inoculation. Furthermore, there became a new, new, there became a change in the concepts of laws and politics. There were unintentional changes in these concepts between the Americas and England. Common law was imposed in the colonies after 1700. There were trials, but pleading instead of going to trial was much more popular. Punishments in the colonies were different than that, than that of England. Executions were rare because the Americans needed the workforce. Crimes were redefined. In England, any criticism of government was, was libelous. However, after the trial of Jonathan Zenger, a lawyer, lawyer of Andrew Hamilton, lie, criticism of government did not become autom automatically libelous if it was based on truth. The fact that the colonists created their own institutions and gave themselves self-governing powers created a division between England and the colonies. Colonies had their own delegates to their own colonial assemblies. The governors appointed in England had limited power in that they could not impose contracts nor they could influence colonial leaders. The assemblies, for the most part, also ignored, ignored parliament. England did not mind this autonomy until, until friction reached its maximum in 1763 with the revolution after the French and Indian War. After that friction was created came about the revolution, which we will, which we will cover in the next chapter.